Nice little three, two. Why do I know anything? <laughs> this is killing me. But it's really, it's really nice. Have you seen the house? I've seen the house. I helped them buy it. Be real careful about that. Make sure you have something in right. My name is Sally Newell. I've been in the real estate business since the early 70s. Was lucky to get in the real estate business in that it has just always been something I love. The people, sometimes the people got into management and sales management, partly because when I watched people getting in the business, sometimes I felt like I'd meet somebody and think, wow, they're gonna be great, and then they wouldn't be. And I would think it was their sales manager's fault for not helping them. So I think I wanted to experience that myself and see if a little bit of coaching, a little bit of hand-holding, where they could enjoy a career in real estate as well. So when I met Patrick O'Connor, Patrick sat down with me and he said, okay, I want you to tell me what I need to do to be successful. So right there, that told me that he was serious about the business. Not everybody gets in the business and does it to make a living and to do it full time. Sometimes people piddle and I don't have a lot of tolerance for that. So I was excited that Patrick was serious about doing the business and doing what he needed to do to be successful. And it's tough when you first get started because it's brand new. If you are an achiever, so to speak, it's particularly tough because it takes a while for you to get up and going. It's very hard on someone who is going to be very successful because they're not seeing the rewards for all their hard work yet. So we talked a little bit about that and one thing I told him to do was take uh, two, three, four neighborhoods and farm them, which is basically plant seeds, cultivate and watch it grow into a business by putting yourself there. So you have to be visible however you do that, whether it's through mailings or events, and you become the expert in the neighborhood, or at least you become the person that people think of when they think of real estate. And so I told him, I said, don't start it if you're not gonna follow through with it. And I promise you it'll work for you. So Patrick goes out and picks 30 neighborhoods and inundates them with Patrick O'Connor. One of the neighborhoods was his own neighborhood, which was smart. It was a very, very nice neighborhood with some good price points and that sort of thing. And he even had an open house one time on, he didn't have a house to have one, so he had one on a vacant lot that he had listed. He asked me about it and I said, listen, anything you can do you know, just the invitation itself is another touch. And that's where you get your business is from the people that you've cultivated to be uh, people that think about you in a nice way and think about you when they think about real estate. And all those people that you know, know other people that you don't know. And so they are sort of peripherally in your sphere of influence. 80% of a real estate agent's business comes from their sphere. He, to this day, he does, he'll go out and find other people who are successful in the business. They might be in California to get ideas. So I think he's been a good copycat and he's also very creative. So he's done, done some things that are just totally Patrick. So he's built a reputation for himself and he did it pretty quickly. Now he was frustrated for about six months, but he was doing all the right things. And I told him, you, you have to know the market. You know, that's what people look to you for is information. Treating people and other agents fairly having a good reputation among other agents I think is really important. Bad news travels a whole lot faster than good news and so you want to be the good news and I think he's maintained that. So he's got a good relationship with the people he does business with, he's got a great relationship with other agents, he shares when you are successful 
and you want to be more successful, then you have to find those moments and those blocks of time that you can move into working. Get your time management so that you also are blocking some time for your family. Because this business can just consume you. I mean, we're dealing with the most important, most valuable, most expensive thing anybody owns. And, and so you're dealing with their money and they don't mind calling you at you know, six in the morning or nine at night. And, and, and we have to be understanding of that and take care of those things, but you also have to have some time to yourself. But he said, why don't other agents make it? I said, because they don't do what I tell them to do. I love that, that I was there in the beginning, and it's fun to be here now and watch how successful he is. He walks faster. <laughs> it's like, there goes Patrick. <laughs> Congratulations, and Patrick O'Connor team, 15.7 million dollars My name is Rebecca Beatty. I've been with Patrick for five years, since before the team started. I'm the operations director, so I handle all the paperwork, basically. Put in listings, I check on statuses, handle the contracts, the closings, and just kind of do what I do by myself. <laughs> and I get to work from home now, which is nice, so. I can come in and see everyone, but then I can also work from home. I love everybody that I work with. I love working with Patrick, always have. Just a great team. I feel like right now is definitely, if you're gonna sell, right now is the time the market is shifting. We're not getting as many multiple offers as we were. I'm Ali Kuhn with the Patrick O'Connor team. In 2020, I was the top producer on the team. I am kind of a hybrid agent because I also like doing land sales as well as residential. I will uh, show a million dollar lake house and then put on my snake boots and go romping through the woods. <laughs> There's like so many like fun parts of it. Just the people you get to meet. I like the competition. I like helping people. I couldn't sit behind a desk all day and have like a nine to five job. So I just like all the aspects of real estate. So we're kind of seeing a little bit of a lull right now. We kind of expected this. We are seeing more houses come on the market, which is great. Uh, inventory is still low. So it's still a great time to buy and sell. I think now is a really good time for buyers who have maybe lost out in the past to really focus on trying to get into something while maybe other people are distracted and on vacation or kind of checked out for the summer. So I think it's a great season to buy and sell right now. The, the real estate market is still going strong. I mean, historically, interest rates are still low even though the, they're rising. I just think you need to be aggressive and work with the right person to get in the door and get what you want. I'm Hannah Norman and I'm a partner with the Patrick O'Connor team at Cobble Banker. So my role on the team is a little bit different than the other team members. I'm partners with Patrick, so we work hand in hand every day. His clients are my clients, my clients are his. If he doesn't answer the phone, they normally call me, and if I don't answer, they call him. So we're definitely seeing a shift in the market, but I wouldn't say it's a negative shift. So if you've been trying to buy and you haven't been able to get your offer accepted, this is definitely a good time to push forward and try and buy a home. I love real estate because every day is a little bit different. Tons of different people, different homes we're walking in and out of every day. And there's a lot of unexpected things that happen. So super fast paced and really different, but every day is fun. So if you're a first time home buyer in this market, I definitely suggest working with an agent that is in the market every day, knows other agents' connections in the area. They have a great lender. They know the home inspectors. Just someone that's super connected in the industry if you're a first time home buyer. It's an awesome time to buy, but also it's scary and you're making the biggest purchase of your life. So you need to have someone to help you and hold your hand and walk you through the process. When you're trying to buy your first home, I would say it's really, really important to separate needs from wants. Really break down like what you need in a home, how long you plan on living there, what what's really important, you know, cosmetic things, 
can be fixed. Granite countertops aren't necessarily the most important thing. Maybe location, I would say that would be more important. Come in at your best. <laughs> I just think if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, call us because we would love to help.